What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how we can make something like this using the path tracer. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So for all you that want to follow this tutorial with a scene that I already have pre-built with all my settings in it, I collaborated with the Pixel Lab. You can actually go to the link down below inside the description. There you'll find a project file that we have right here. And if you just scroll down, you can download it right from the website. Then also while you're there, make sure you stop over inside the product shop where they have a whole bunch of new stuff as well. And if you buy anything from the Pixel Lab, make sure you use my affiliate link. It helps with the channel and it helps me make these free tutorials for you guys now to get started this is the scene that i have built inside of unreal engine 5.1 if you look you see we have the tiki statue here we have a couple of emissive materials in here glowing against the walls as well and then we have some glass orbs in here because i wanted to show how the glass looks in the path tracer then you also see we have a glass bulb here in the background as well and to get started with the path tracer first let me show you the stuff that we need to turn on if it's not turned on already to get you guys started now pulling up the official Unreal Engine documentation, and of course I'll leave this down in the description below so you guys can use it as a reference. But scrolling down, there's just a few things that we need to turn on. So if I come down here in the documentation, it shows you everything that you need to turn on right down here, in which I'll show you visually how to turn this all on as well. Now by default, this stuff should be turned on already if you're using a film and broadcast template, but if not, I'll run you through everything that you need to turn on, but it's always good to have the official documentation in case you run into any issues. So first to get started, as I was alluding to, if you have the Unreal Engine project browser open, you wanna come over here to where it says film, video, and live events, and then you just wanna start with a blank slate. Now, if you start with a blank slate, everything should be on for you to automatically jump into path tracing. But for if any reason it's not, let me show you the stuff that we need to turn on inside the settings. And so with your Unreal Engine 5 opened up, you want to come over here to edit. And then you want to come down here to project settings. And over here on the left hand side, we want to scroll this down until we see the window that says rendering, which will be right here under engine. So you come to engine and then you come over here and you have the rendering settings right here. Now, once you have rendering clicked on, you want to come over here on the right hand side and scroll this down until you find hardware ray tracing. So I'm just going to slow this down right here. And like I was saying before, these should automatically already be turned on for you. But if they're not, you want to make sure that you have this one turned on right here. This is support hardware ray tracing. And then you want to have pass tracing turned on as well. And after you have these two turned on right here, you want to make sure that you come down to optimizations, which is further down, which we have right here under optimizations. And then you want to look for support compute skin capture, which we have right here. You can see that it's grayed out, but if it's not, you want to make sure that this is check marked on. And then another thing you want to make sure you have turned on would be DirectX 12, which it already should be turned on. But if it's not, you want to come over here back into your settings and you want to come down here and look for platforms which we have right here. And then you wanna click on Windows. And then you wanna scroll until you see Targeted. So let me see. And right here is where you found Targeted, R-H-I-S, and then Default, R-H-I, and you have Direct 12. It should already be on, but if it's not, then you wanna make sure you have that selected. Here's a couple of your other options right there. But again, we want DirectX 12. And that should be all the settings that we need to officially get ready for path tracing inside of Unreal Engine 5.1. Now, once we're inside of Unreal Engine 5.1, you just work as normal. Like you do all your materials the same, you do all your lighting the same. And inside of here, if you come over here where it says lit, if you scroll down to path tracing, this is actually gonna switch it over to path tracing mode. Now you can see that it's getting extremely grainy and this is kind of reminisc to anybody that's worked in, you know, like other DCC, like Maya or Cinema 4D, and you used any type of offline rendering like Redshift, Octane, Arnold, or things of the like, you know, V-Ray, this is gonna be very familiar to you. But what they added inside of Unreal Engine 5.1 is this little progress bar down here. So before you had to do this with a console command, but now it's built in. So it's letting you know everything that's calculating inside the scene as it's moving up. And once it's completely finished, that's gonna be what your scene looks like when it's fully ray traced. And so working with the path tracer is extremely easy, but what I typically like to do is I'll come back over here. I'll just work in lit mode or unlit mode, get everything set up the way that I need it to be, like with my lighting and all that different stuff, my camera moves and everything. And then once I wanna see how something is looking in particular, I just come back over to lit and then come down here to path tracing and click that on. 
Now, depending on your system specs, ray tracing might take a little bit longer. Like with this computer right here, I have a 2080 Ti and I'm using the AMD Threadripper 64 core. So it's pretty decent, especially in the CPU range, but inside the GPU range, it could probably use something a little bit better. I know the 20 series was basically like the start of the ray tracing era here. And so it's a little bit older, but I'm still getting decent results when I'm working in the path tracer. So let me show you some of the settings that I use and some of the tips and tricks that I use that get a clean render out of the path tracer so if i come over here to my folder and if you're following along with this exact scene everything is already laid out for you so i'm going to come over here first the post process volume and then if i come over here in my search bar i'm just going to type in path tracing like so and let me scroll this up so it's a little bit easier to see but you can see everything that i have turned on down here now the first one we're going to start with is max bounces and if i click on this arrow you can see by default for you, it's going to say 32, but I'm going to bring it back down to 10 because for max bounces, what this is doing is basically calculating the light every time it bounces off a surface. So if you have it down to one, the light is going to bounce off a surface once. If you have it on two, it's going to bounce off two different surfaces and so on and so forth. But for 32, that's kind of killing it right there. I think with 10, you could get optimal results. Now moving on to the sample per pixels, I think 2048, and that's gonna be the default. I think that's perfectly fine. We're gonna miss more with the sample rates once we get into the movie render queue. At the filter width, I'm gonna leave this at default at three. And if you look down here under the attribute, it's giving you an example of what it does. It's gonna set your anti-aliasing at a sharper value if you have it lower. And for larger values, it's gonna make it softer and a little bit more blurrier. But I found that three is the optimal setting for that. And then of course, if you have any emissive materials like I have in my scene here, you wanna turn that on. And then for max path exposure, by default, it's gonna be by 30. I thought one was optimal here, and that's because I can mess around inside of other settings in post process volume to get it to look a little bit better. Like, let me actually reset this to 30, and then I'm gonna come over here to path tracing, and let me show you what the difference looks like. So you can see with the max exposure at 30, we're getting a lot of different noise in here. We're getting a lot of fireflies and everything, but let me take it back down to one and show you guys what it looks like at one. And this is what it looks like with the max exposure here set at one. So you can see that we're getting a lot cleaner render out of here and we don't have any of the fireflies or noise going on inside of our scene. Now moving on to the reference atmosphere, and this is something I'm gonna to allude to later inside the tutorial, but you wanna click this on if you're using any type of exponential height fog inside of your scene. With the updates in 5.1, we can now render out and path tracing with the fog and everything, which is really cool. And then moving on to the last one here, we have the denoiser in which I wanna turn this off. Like it uses the Intel AI denoiser, which gives it kind of a blurry type effect if you're doing any type of animation on there, because the way that the denoiser works is it's gonna denoise per frame. So every frame that you render out is gonna denoise it for that particular frame. So whenever you play the animation, the sequence, it's gonna have like that weird smeary look. It kind of looks like AI, like something out of Mid Journey or something like that. But if you're just gonna use it for like a still, then using a denoiser is perfectly fine. But for an animated sequence, I would suggest to turn that off. And so those are my path tracing settings that I'm gonna be using. Now let me move back over to the post press volume and to the exposure because there's a couple of settings in there that I found was optimal for making this scene look as clean as it is. So if I come back down here in my post press volume, I'm gonna turn this off and actually let me come over here to lit. And I'm gonna come down here to exposure, it's right under bloom. So if I turn this on and let me scroll this up so you can see a little bit better here, like so. And so I have turned on my exposure composition. I have it turned on too, because if you just do it at the default of one, it makes it extremely dark in here. And the reason that I bumped it up to two is because if you render out your scene that is completely dark, you're gonna get a lot of noise in there. It's just like you're using with the real camera. You wanna make sure that you have optimal lighting inside your camera so you don't get noise. Same thing in Unreal Engine 5. And so if your scene is too dark, you wanna come over here to exposure composition and I bumped mine up to two, but feel free to bump it up for whatever is good for your scene. Every scene is gonna be completely different. And then moving down to the Min EV100 and the Max EV100, I set these values both to one. And this is just gonna stop any type of automatic exposure that can be kind of annoying if you're doing any type of camera moves. So if you set both of them to one, your lighting is gonna be exact throughout your animation here. 
and that should be it for the post price volume now moving on to the movie render queue there are a few things that we want to make sure that we have inside there to get the optimal render so if i come down here to my content drawer i'm going to actually look for my animation sequence down here which i have right here so let me scroll this up and we can actually look through camera so as you saw at the beginning of the tutorial just a really basic camera move let me start this all the way at the beginning here at frame zero so i'm going to click on play you can see that we have a basic camera move going throughout the scene here and if you want to render this out you want to just click on the clipboard right here and that's going to bring up your movie render queue now if i click on unsave config this is where we're going to set our configurations and the very first thing that you're going to want to do is come down here to deferred rendering and you're going to want to delete that because if you come over here to the settings button you can see down here we have path tracing all the way at the bottom so you want to make sure that you have path tracing turned on and then that way it's actually going to render out the path tracer and not the looming that we usually render out of and so moving back on i usually come over here and i'll delete the jpeg and i'm just going to render out with a png instead but feel free to use the jpeg if you want and then i'm going to turn off the alpha channel because i don't have any alpha or anything in here and then coming back over here to settings i want to add anti-aliasing now this is going to be very important remember that we talked about the samples when we're inside the post process volume well we're going to want to mess with the samples inside the movie render queue as well so it's going to be a mixture of a spatial sample count and a temporal sample count so it can be a little confusing at first if you don't understand how these two correlate with each other but basically your temporal sample count is going to multiply whatever you have inside your spatial count so let's say that we want our overall sample count to be 500 frames if I type in 250 in my spatial sample count and then I put two inside of my temporal sample count, that means that we're going to get 500 samples overall. But for me, typically, I don't render with motion blur. I often do that in post and like After Effects using real smart motion blur. And so what I'm going to do is inside of my spatial sample count, I'm going to make this 500 frames and then my temporal sample count down to one. And that's just going to have 500 sample counts overall. And you might notice when you put a numerical value inside of your sample counts here, you're going to get this asterisk here in which you just want to click on override anti-aliasing. And that's going to make sure that your sample counts here are going to override everything in there. So like I was saying, every scene is going to be completely different, whether you're rendering like an indoor scene or an outdoor scene. So this might be something that you need to experiment with. And then especially if you're rendering with motion blur, you're going to want to bump up those temporal sample counts to help with the motion blur. But as I was saying, I typically render with no motion blur out of Unreal and then just add that later on if I need it. And for those of you that are interested in how you could turn off motion blur, we're going to do that in a post process volume. So let me just move this over to the side for now. And then I'm going to come back over here to post process volume. If I come over here to search, I'm just going to type in motion and then you'll come up with your references for the motion blur. And so you want to turn these two on right here where it says amount. You're just going to have it down to zero and max. You want to have it down to zero as well. And that's going to turn off the motion blur for whenever you're rendering. Now, coming back over here to settings, this is basically everything we need to render out the path tracer. So you would just come down here to output. You would click on your output directory, select the three dots, maybe just render it to your desktop inside of a folder there. And then right here for file name format, I'm just gonna name this one Tiki. So where's the sequence name? You could type in anything that you want there, but you wanna make sure you keep it inside the brackets. And then you also wanna make sure you keep your frame number there. Right here is where you can set up your resolution and everything. And I'm just gonna leave everything else at default. So once you're happy with all your different settings in here, you would just click accept. And then that's going to bring back over the movie render queue and you would just hit render local and you would just let everything fire off. Now with the path tracer, it works as an offline renderer. So this is going to really be dependent on your system specs. And on top of that note, path tracer now supports multi GPU rendering. So if you have double cards in your system, you're going to get double the results whenever you're rendering out. And for those of you that downloaded my project file, I do have my sample settings already set inside the movie render queue. So if I come back over here, the movie render queue, click on unsave config. If you click right here where it says load save preset, you can see right here where it says pending movie pipeline master config. If I click on that, it's going to give you all my settings already built in here inside of the path tracer. But that's if you're using this sample and you want to see how I laid everything out. And thank you guys again. Make sure you check out my brand new course, Unreal Engine 5 in five days in the playlist up above. And until next time, stay fresh, 
keep creating and i see you guys in the next video i see you soon take care